What's happening everybody, Josh here from Spawn Flyfish and we got a gross one for you today. We are signing up some steelhead egg sacs in this nightmare of a pattern. Stay tuned, it's going to be a lot of fun, it's going to be a mess. Hope you guys enjoy it. Alright, in the vise we have a Spawn Jig Shank 60 degree 20 millimeter and we have a Spawn Football Bead 7 millimeter in Peach. We're going to wrap some lead free wire down just to secure this bead because it is not going to want to go anywhere after we do that. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to throw on a little swivel. So the platform for this tie, I don't know if you could call it a fly, but this tie is going to be set on this foundation and we are going to get after creating this lifelike sack of eggs. So for those of you that have steelhead fish with bait, this thing is going to look eerily familiar to you. It's inspired by Pete and Will Carasino and what they've created. And if you know me, I like some shortcuts. Although this didn't turn out to be a shortcut. This takes a lot longer. Um, maybe not even easier but it turned out pretty cool so we're going to show you guys how we do it we're not going to attach a hook you could attach a hook right there if you wanted to um, this thing utilizes quite a bit of beads so uh, i don't really want to lose it so what i'm going to do um, like i have here is i'm going to do a egg loop knot and then i'm going to tie it off on the stinger with Maxima ultra green so as you can see a little sneak peek at what we're about to bring to life this thing is gross so we got that set and the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to take a bump of that ice dub and uv shrimp pink we're just going to create a little butt section here it just kind of fills out as you kind of brush this fly together um tied quite a few renditions of this thing now and i really like just this little tiny hint of some flavor at the end so we're going to just wrap this right like so all right so now the tricky thing is ensuring that we're going to space out all of these beads equally so i have three different styles of trout bead um, today and what we're going to do is we're just going to be stacking these and twisting them and looping them over and it's going to be a pretty interesting process for those of you that have seen the butt sucking leech it's very similar it's where this kind of uh idea stemmed for and creating this egg pattern but as you can see we're going to get about 13 beads in here in this short little space around distributed so you got to be pretty mindful of where you're going to place and your wraps so like you don't want to just start banging in wraps of thread here to really tighten it up be mindful of every wrap here because we are going to be moving things around going back adding beads and really just finding every little place that we can to make this thing look lifelike. And what we're gonna to continue to do is see these gaps. These will cause some issues for when you're um, tying in each bead. So we'll go back and we'll start adding some thread in those situations. That's an area where you can be generous. So you've seen this before. For those of you that don't, I'm trying to show. So we're twisting this up. Got a gator spinner here. So, and then when you bring it back on itself, it's gonna twist like so. So that's the way we're gonna do this here, and we're gonna lock that down. One of these, at the very beginning, I like to protrude a little longer, so that we're gonna shorten them up as we go, but one of these first ones here, I like to go a little longer. And again, so we're wrapping over that. You don't need to brush it out right now, we're gonna come in later with a brush, but it's easier to tie it on if you have a smooth surface, so we'll just continue to fill this in. You could add some more lead-free wire, so it's a smoother, um, a smoother transition here, but we're gonna make this work. I'm just gonna throw some thread in now that I'm kind of preaching about it. All right, so we got one side done. So we're kind of gonna do it in, th in threes or fours. So we'll do it here, and then we'll turn it again, and we'll go there, and we'll just keep going. And I do have some different 
styles of beads. So we're gonna really get some of these different styles going here and get them in there just to create a more lifelike. And we're gonna tie it right on that same line. So that's why we don't wanna create this huge bump in thread. Trim and make sure that bead, if you have the bead here, it's not going to work. So that bead has to be in the middle. And let it fall back over itself. And you can see these are going to start falling in place. doesn't have to be pretty. In fact, the grosser the better. But you do need to get it to tw spin so that it spins back on itself. So we want that to hold in place. All right, we'll turn it over here and we'll go again. And you're just gonna continue to do this, working your way up the vise. So several things I'm gonna try before somebody comments on it. Soft beads, we'll try it. The twisting of it is gonna be a little difficult, but I will figure that out because I would like that kind of gummy feel when that steel head bites onto this. Um, I've got plenty of steel head on hard beads. Uh, hasn't really ever seemed to be the difference maker on catching fish and not catching fish, but I would like to have a soft bead style. They make plastics that look like a glump of eggs, but it's always more fun to create something on the vise, especially a solution like this. Like how do you how do you replicate what brings bait fishermen success? And that's exactly what we're doing right now with this tie. Maybe not fly, but this tie. Again, spin it up. And when you're doing this at home, it's easier to spin it down. I'm just trying to do it so you guys can see. It's way easier, in fact. Bring it up to each other and let that spin reverse on itself and tie it off. Now we only got about 10 more beads to go. So, all right, we're getting a big old glob there, which is good. So you can see that we have like kind of a, a three segment. So now we're gonna fill in each of these gaps on every side. We're just gonna go around and just work our way forward. And it, again, might not look like much right now, but it will really come to life. And again, I have a couple different types of beads, so I'm gonna throw one of these guys in there. Just looks like it's a little milkier. Um, sometimes those, those salmon eggs get that look to them. And so say that you tied this in up here. I have, and I probably will do it on this just so you can see, I'll go back and I'll tie one in in between some of the beads and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that so that you can really fill it in because there's a way to just make sure that you can check everything at the end and fill in any missing pieces. Sorry, I got distracted talking to you guys. Didn't tie that down. Again, this is a mess and it will all come together in the end. saved it. Make sure you get those wraps in before you pull that bead off. I'm going to trim this out. I got a little bit of an extra tag end over here. All right, and I will turn it towards you and keep plugging away. You can really take your time with this. I'm trying to be mindful of your guys' time, but you can really plug away at this, um, or you can do it nice and slow and make sure that they're as evenly distributed as possible. I got a little. 
little too many wraps in there. There we go. Come back over itself. This is the Uni Mohair in one of the new colors they have in red. Forgot to mention that earlier. This is definitely not what this product's intended to be used for, but that's the great thing about doing stuff on the vise. Most of the stuff that we tie up has other has other purposes. So you can see that one's starting to fray a little bit, but that's okay. We want that look to it and you can see so gaps start to formulate here so this is where we're just gonna fill it in and we'll keep rotating around With quite a few of our rivers having selective gear rules where they ban bait, I know that many people like to use this style of fishing here where you got a sack of eggs, you got your octopus hooks, or whatever hook you prefer. Um, this is gonna be a alternative, hopefully. That's the idea here, what we're trying to create. But it's definitely fun to solve some of these problems. I got this thing wet, let it drift. It is just so gnarly looking. There, there is zero doubt in my mind that it's gonna work. I do want to conquer it on a soft bead. So for those of you out there watching, if you got some soft beads at home, be sure to tag us. If you do, I would love to see it brought to life. And just coming around, Here we go. So as we kind of enter into winter fishing here, right now we have chum in the river. We had early that A run of coho, a lot of fun to fish for. And then we got chum, which I'm sure many of you guys have seen us put an absolute clinic on when it comes to fishing for chum out here in the rivers. And we quietly catch quite a few steelhead. It's not something that we've heavily advertised over the years um, that we've lived down here, but we, we definitely do our fair share of steelhead fishing. And uh, we'll start to see some of those hatchery fish here in the next few months. And then we'll really, really ramp things up as we get into January, February. Um, and then depending on if we can fish in March or not. But it will be a lot of fun. We're fishing some smaller rivers. Um, we have a couple decent sized rivers as well. Um, but most of those systems are pretty small that we're fishing. We're definitely not too shy to throw a bead. Um, like to fish a streamer first, then like a nymph, and then maybe a pegged egg. And this is definitely uh, a pattern that we've utilized. If you've seen Pete's version of this, um, that's a very productive way to fish. So they just really like these big old globs of eggs. Especially with all this nasty mohair, it's going to stick into them. So you can see I'm getting a little more generous with these thread wraps. Um, we're just, we're, we've basically just created a platform here to just continue to tie these on. Once you level that out, then it's okay. When we are steelhead fishing too, uh, we find a lot of cutthroat like to eat this kind of stuff. Um, so you could definitely use this pattern for species outside of uh, steelhead. I know a cutthroat's gonna eat this, or at least try. Might not be able to get the whole thing in his mouth. 
but you could 100% use this for trout fishing. All right, you can see this is starting to fill in and we're gonna come in and brush this all out and it's gonna really have that like clump of eggs look. But again, we're just continuing to go around, continuing to fill in gaps and continuing to bring this sack of eggs to life. This is an easier pattern if you have a rotary vise. If not, you can still make it happen. Okay, see, see what I was saying here? So we have this egg that's tied in right here. It is totally okay to take that thread wrap and come behind it and tie one in. Totally okay, it's not gonna mess anything up. That other one's already tied down. We're gonna really lock this one in and we're just creating a full profile. That's what we want. Bring that bead down. And I've sent pictures of this fly, of this, this thing to some uh, buddies that are avid steelhead fishermen. Um, like they put up numbers that most of us only dream about year after year after year. And first thing is that'll work. So, pretty excited. They are too. Whether or not I tie them some is to be determined. But it's always it's always cool to have some friends like that and have them show that interest immediately. It is getting, we have got a absolute mess going on here, which this is just the messier sometimes the better when it comes to this baby. All right, we're gonna get another color in here. Hopefully it's looking all right on your end. Kind of tough to tell. You, This is one of those things where it's like, it looks bad until it's done and then it's then it just looks gross. So be mindful of that. You can take your time. I'm trying to bang this out, but make sure that sucker's in the middle. Make sure it's twisting. Because if it's not gonna come back over itself, it's not gonna brush out nearly as well. It's just just all of it's not gonna just function the way that you want it to. I have tied this with a chenille that you would tie in at the very beginning. And that is definitely something you can do. So you tie that chenille in the beginning and then what you're gonna do is you'd wrap it around. This mohair, once you brush it out, like it's already kind of filling in these gaps. Once you brush it out, it, it kind of really does the trick for you. Like you, you'll be good. All right. So when you're tying these in, you're getting closer to the end of this shank, you kind of think of it as a taper. So you started with a little bit longer, then you're gonna get shorter and shorter because you want these beads to kind of sit like so. You want them to be tight here at the end of the fly. You don't want them to be wavering around or leaning back over because you're just gonna see too much of that mohair. And we want that full, full egg uh, sack look here. So when you do tie that in, take a little more off the back side of it. And we'll do our best to cover all this up at the end. I do think that it's, maybe not funny is the right word, but I mean, people like to make fun of bead fishermen here in the Northwest, but like in Alaska, all those people that make fun of the bead fishermen here in the Northwest, like sh come and show us pictures of these big rainbows that they caught on the same beads that the people are using down here for steelhead. So I always find that pretty interesting. Like I'm a big believer in learning about what people 
are finding success on and learning about how to replicate it or how they're doing it. Um, hence why I'm tying this fly. Otherwise, you would not be seeing me do this. But it's uh, it's always very interesting to me to learn how people are having success and kind of like the characteristics around success or like the ideas around success in different fisheries. So it's very interesting. Um, in the shop, you get to hear a lot of things, the right way, the wrong way. Um, our kind of take on it is that we like to learn, we like to create, and we like to catch fish. So it's really fun to just get on the vise, mess around. I mean, Pete and I have been kind of playing with this one for a while now, and it's pretty, pretty cool. And it'll continue to evolve. Like this is by this this pattern will no by no means live and die at this exact stage. It will likely evolve. It'll likely change as many flies do or patterns do. Alright, what we're gonna try and do here is fill in this. I don't like that huge thread all that thread right there. So what we're gonna try and do is sneak a few more beads in here and then we'll brush it out. And then this definitely will be one that you'll see me use head cement on. I know sometimes you see me skip that stage. It's not that I skip it, I just skip it on camera, but I want to make sure that you guys do indeed add thread. We're gonna finish off this big gnarly thread head. We're gonna just clean it up a little bit just for my own personal sake on camera. The one I tied just before this ended up being a lot better, but that's okay, it's kind of what happens. So we're gonna get this in there, we're gonna whip finish, and we are gonna get in there with a brush and really brush it out. A second one in there. We got a pretty big orange on there, which is fine. That's why we use orange thread. Trim that out. And then we're gonna get in here with our brush and brush this all out. Alrighty, that looks like a sack of eggs. So last thing we gotta do, add a little head cement and we are good to go. Drift this down the river for some steelhead. So a little bit of a, uh, not a pretty tie. Not maybe my best performance on camera, but you guys get the idea here. This is gonna be a really cool pattern. Uh, it's fun to create, take your time, focus on each wrap, and you will be able to create something really nice. That's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to hit like, be sure to hit subscribe, and we will see you guys next time.